Hey there everyone, my name is Atesh and welcome to the series Deploy. In case you are new onto this channel and for the first time you're watching this video, this is a part of a playlist we call it as Deploy in which I'm uh, walking you through with the nuances of all the deployment that happens and in this video I'm going to walk you through that how rate limiting is done with the Nginx and first of all what is this rate limiting concept we're going to discuss that. Uh, we also have a small target of comments on this video, nothing much, just 60 comments and I would be super happy to see from where you're watching this video and are these videos helping you out or not. Let me know in the comment section. So first of all, discussing the idea of the rate limiting and why is it necessary and at what level it can happen. Now rate limiting can happen on multiple levels. The first one is on the code level as soon as the request reaches to the code part. Another level that it can be done is on the server level where the software is running like Nginx and you can actually like uh, discard the request directly at that level. Having it on the both level is always a great idea but in this video we'll focus just on having a rate limit on to the server level. So I'll walk you through with the documentation and our own documentation as well in case the Nginx is a little bit overwhelming for you. So uh, I still am connected with the same machine uh, that we spinned up in the last couple of videos. I am expecting that you are also on that machine and we'll be just uh, modifying a couple of files. In the last video, our server was up and running, Nginx. In this video also, server will be up and running. There will be, there is not going to be much of a difference in that. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll be just working with that. So in case you want to see that uh, where the documentation is uh, for the rate limiting, you have to search for it. It's not easy to just look forward into this one. And the first one that you want to search is not the rate limiting, but actually just search for the limit. This will give you two of the major files up first here. There are actually three, one of them. There is a collection module. We don't want to go with that. Just go and search for the one which says this one, Nginx HTTP limit request module. There is a connection module as well. We are not much interested in that part. We are interested on this request module. As you can see, I've been visiting this quite often. So this is how it works. There are a lot of directives. That means lots of blocks which are available for you and you can actually inject this block here and can have a rate limiting. Now rate limiting is a very simple concept. If one IP address is back to back requesting you, maybe they are trying to flood you or DDoS you. So there are certain number of requests only allowed from a particular IP address. So we have to store the IP address as well somewhere in the memory so that the flooding cannot happen. And there should be some permissible number of amount of requests that can be uh, say, sent to you. So both of these are going to be done. And uh, you can see there are lots of ways how you can do this limit request, uh, li limit request zone, environment variable, a lot of them are here. Now you can go ahead and read a whole lot about it in case you wish. This is not a really long documentation, but I have actually extracted some meaningful information out of it. And you can find that at uh, docs.chaiko.com. And this is where you can see uh, the rate limiting in Nginx. So this is the new docs that I have pushed just before this video. And we'll be just going through that what are the details and how it works. So first of all, Nginx provides simple ways to add rate limiting. The first one is limit request zone and limit request. So this is the directive. Directive means the block. As you can see, this is HTTP block. This is HTTP directive. So the similar kind of that we will be going through with the this one using limiting HTTP request. For this, we have to open up a special file, which is sudo nano slash etc slash nginx and nginx config. Let's go ahead and open that. So I am currently into uh, quite far away from this. We need to go into slash etc slash nginx. Let's go ahead, uh, go to slash cd slash, come on, I can write that, slash etc slash nginx. And let's go ahead and do a quick ls. And can I see the file, uh, which file I'm looking for, nginx.conf. So the config file should be somewhere here. Here it is, nginx config. Now I want to open this file. Couple of ways to open it. You can go ahead and use Vim. Not going to judge you on that. In fact, you are a good programmer. I'll be using nano because it's easier for me and I'll be just going with the nginx config. Now, as soon as I open this, uh, it says uh, it's unwritable. So that's why we have to use sudo for this one. Let's go ahead and exit that and we'll be using sudo, sudo nano and we'll be saying nginx config. Now it's going to be asked password. Hopefully that's the one. Yep. So now I can go ahead and edit, edit this file. And as you can see, there are so many of the things here. One where we are interested is in the HTTP module. 
So you can see this is a pretty big of a module and we want to inject some of the settings in here. There are SSL settings, there are so many settings going on up here. What we want to do is just the HTTP. Let's go into the docs. So in the HTTP, we want to add the following code, which says limit request zone, then a whole lot of things, and then got this one. I'll just go ahead and copy this. I don't want to copy the whole thing, just want to know that this is somewhere it's, it's going to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paste it up here. So I'll just go ahead and paste this. I will also indent this properly so that uh, it's not really bothering us much. So I can just go ahead and hit this tab and one tab is good enough. All right, you can put it at the top, at the bottom. It's not going to bother much in this case, but sometimes it does. In this case, it's not going to bother much. And then all we have to do is just save this file and talk about this one. So let's go ahead and write it out. So control O to write this out and control X to exit this. Job is not yet done. We need to study a little bit. So this is a directive. Directive means this is, oops, my bad. So there are different blocks in the Nginx. The first block we are studying here is Nginx and in that there is a directive. Directive simply means a command that you are giving to Nginx. So this is my directive. I really need to check my mouse. Limit that we are constructing and then we have a couple of variables going on, some zone which says limit colon 10m uh, rate two requests per second. But these are all unknown variables. We want to study them. So I have actually written what's actually it means. So first of all, Limit request zone, this is a directive. This is an Nginx directive that, hey, I want to enable one more settings. After that, there is a binary remote address. This is a variable that holds the client IP address, but more, in, more interestingly, it holds that in the binary format. This is done to save some of the space in the memory and converting things into the binary uh, saves a little bit of the memory. So that's why we are using this special variable a moment a request comes to the server, it just converts into binary and hold that in the memory. After that, the next is variable that what zone you want to use. This my limit is just a variable. There could be multiple zones. Maybe you want to allow more requests from the US. Maybe you want to allow more requests from India. Depends on what zone you want to enable. In this case, we are naming it just randomly as my limit. Feel free to use any variable. After that, it's saying 10M. 10M simply means how much space in the memory we want to give. So in this case, uh, the 10M means 10 megabytes of the memory, which is good enough. I have given you an estimation, rough estimation here as well, that it's going to hold around 160,000 of the uh, IP addresses, which is pretty big, but you can allocate more memory as well if your server allows that. Now after that, this is the variable rate two requests per second. Pretty easy, self-explanatory, two R per second means uh, we'll allow it to make two requests per second. So that's it, that's the variable. Now you understand each bit of it and you will be able to configure it. But as I said, this is not all done. We have still a couple of more settings that needs to be done. Because now your server knows it, but which uh, files this uh, server or this capacity or this rate limiting needs to apply, we need to mention that as well. And for this, we need to open this sites available default file. So let's go ahead and open that, that as well. We're gonna go into CD, CD sites available. Yep, that's the one. Uh, if I do a ls, this is the one. So I'll open that as sudo nano, nano, come on. And we'll open up the default. There we go. Once I open this up, we have nothing much into this file. We have already cleaned this up. So that's why it's easy. Inside this server, now inside the location, notice there is a location here. We have the try files, but apart from this location, exactly at this location from where I'm serving this file, I want to inject this, which says limit request, which is another declarative declaration, saying that I am putting up a zone of my limit. This variable my limit is exactly same as I mentioned there, because in that server, I can mention multiple of such requests uh, based on the zone. I'm also putting up this burst 20 and no delay. These are new variables here, so let's study about them. So this thing, burst 20, allows a burst of up to 20 requests beyond the definition limit. So yes, in case somebody is in a genuine need of those requests, a 20 request per second of the burst will be allowed, but no more than that. You can set it up to zero as well in case you don't want to allow it. But after setting the hard limit, I want to go a little bit flexible on that. That's why I'm putting up the burst of zero. No delay means that the request that exceeds the rate limit should be rejected immediately rather than delayed. So sometimes you can put a configuration that, hey, after this, just keep the settings in the hold in the queue. Nginx can do that all automatically for you and then it will allow you to do so. So that's really nice. 
So let's go ahead and copy this. So I'll just go ahead and copy this and I'll paste it up here. So this is the part. I go up here and I'll just say, hey, let's go ahead and hit a line enter, hit the tab and I'll just go ahead and paste this. That's it. And now I can just go ahead and say, I want to write this, control O. And yep, write that here, control X and there we go. But job is not yet done. Job is not yet done. We have made some settings and configuration. So that means we want to check whether the settings were done properly or we have made some mistake. Maybe there's a typo, maybe, maybe there's something. So it's a good way. I really like that how Nginx, you can just pass on an option of dash T to see that whether the syntax is okay or I have made some mistake before I restart because otherwise the whole thing will be crashed. But it's really nice. I just use it quite a lot. And after that, I have to reload this so that all settings gets enabled. So I just go ahead, copy this and go ahead and paste it. And there we go. That's it. It hardly takes a few seconds for these small settings to get enabled. And our website should be still up and running. And 20, we are storing 10 MB there. So uh, still two requests per second is pretty good. And we can just go ahead and two requests per second is really decent enough, good enough. So there we go. In case you want to read more and learn more about it, there is a whole Nginx HTTP limit request module. You can go ahead and uh, learn about it. You can have the log levels. You want to have the logs. You want to have the zones. Everything obviously comes up from here. So go ahead and try this out in case you want to read more. But I don't think so. You will need anything more than this. So all the examples are taken care of here. Anytime you need to revisit it or something, uh, just come to docs.chaikur.com and join our Discord as well in case you are new here. It's available at hitesh.ai slash discord. And there are a lot of fun people around there, almost 50,000. Uh, they are always happy to help each other out. Lots of senior programmers, lots of beginners as well. So go ahead and join that out as well. So that is it. That's your rate limiting in the Nginx. In the next video, I'll have a little bit of the more fun with this. So go ahead and let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.